This is the Motorola Moto G200 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. Once the back plate's removed, there are 18 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now the top cover can be lifted up and removed. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. The LED flash is located here, and there are numerous antenna lines drawn on this plastic piece which are these light gray color lines, including the NFC antenna located in the center. And here's a look at the other side. Once the graphene film is peeled off, the battery cable can be disconnected. Now that the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board which need to be disconnected by popping them off. And there's some copper tape on the back side of the front facing camera which needs to be peeled off so the cable can be disconnected and removed. There's a single Phillips screw on the top of the main board holding it down. Once the screw is removed, the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board, there's a 108 megapixel main camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 2 megapixel depth lens. There's a secondary microphone located on the top corner, and a liquid damage indicator, which is the white sticker, located on the bottom corner. There's also a copper tape over the shields. Once the copper tape is peeled back, there are thermal pads on these two chips. On the other side of the board, the proximity sensor is located on top, and these camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also more copper tape on the back shields, as well as thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled back, there's more thermal paste on top of the RAM and processor, as well as these two chips. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. There's some more graphene film on the speaker assembly, and the graphene film helps transfer heat. And here's a look at the speaker itself. The flex cable connecting the charger port board as well as the subboard to the main board can be disconnected by popping off the cables. The two other ends of the coaxial cable can now be disconnected. There's a single Phillips screw holding on the subboard that needs to be removed. Now the subboard can be removed. Here's a better look at the subboard. The SIM reader is located on the back. Now the charger port board can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at the charger port board. The primary microphone is located on the back underneath the shield, and there is a rubber gasket around the charger port itself. In order to remove the battery, there are no pull tabs to help us pry the battery off, so we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the edges of the battery, and let it sit there for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath the battery, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the battery, and the adhesive underneath the battery is extremely strong, so prying it off is going to be difficult. Once the battery is removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen, which is routed to an opening in the midframe. So if you need to replace the screen, you'd need to remove the back plate, as well as the screws on the top plastic cover and the plastic cover itself. You then disconnect the screen cable, pry the battery off so you have access to the screen cable to route it through the opening in the midframe. At that point, you'd heat to the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off. Apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen, making sure you run the cable back through the opening in the midframe, and reassemble your phone. We can also see the copper heat pipe, which is routed underneath the battery and the motherboard. There's a vibrator motor on the bottom right corner, and the flex cable for the fingerprint reader and power button, as well as the flex cable for the volume keys and the button over here, are all routed through the openings in the midframe, in between the screen and the midframe itself. So if you need to replace either of those, you would also have to pry the screen off. 
And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top and it's held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 6 out of 10. The major downside on this phone is removing the battery since the adhesive underneath the battery is really strong. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.